obviously his his debut wasn't great. Um, mm-hmm. I, like you said, he did some things that impressed me. Like I thought his passing was really really good. Like I thought yeah. his passing was really was really good. I know he lost the ball a lot of times, but I still think for someone his size, his handle really showed that like his handles on a, another level f- for someone of that size. So, right. um, my main problem is just the fact that he looked off balance a lot. Like mm-hmm, even did. when he was back, even when he was backing smaller players down, when he was driving to the basket, it looked like he just lost his footing a lot. Um, he fell a lot of times. Like he looked, he just looked like he was really, really, really off balance. So I don't really know what to make of that. Maybe it's just his small frame. Like he's a skinny person. Maybe it's just the fact that he's getting pushed off the spot so much. Um, but that really stuck out to me. Obviously, the shot not falling. But me personally, even when it came to Brandon Miller or any one of these prospects, the shot not falling is not really a concern to me. Right. Like for any of these guys, like that could happen to anyone. Like the same. The same someone who can drop thirty in the summer league and hitting all their threes, hitting all their shots, and go out there and miss everything. I'm not. I'm really not worried about the shot, especially this early in their career. So that's not really a concern to me. But the problem was, like I said, him losing the ball, him losing him, his balance a lot, and just I don't know, around the rim, I felt like he would have, like he would have better success around the rim, considering a lot of those guys in summer league. Like he was on smaller players a lot. Like, there was a time that he was, like, Brandon Miller was guarding him. Mm-hmm. And he just seemed like he kind of couldn't back him down. So, I just think, obviously, you know, he needs to get stronger. But, I mean, that's something that we knew coming right. into the league. Like, eventually, he's going to get, he's going to have to get stronger. So, mm-hmm. um, that's a little bit of a concern. But, again, I'm not too worried. It's the first game of Summer League. But, like we've said plenty and plenty of times, it does not matter if he comes out here in his offensive game. Even if his offensive game is non-existent, which I don't think it will be in his rookie year. He will be an elite defensive player right. at worst. Like that's why that's why I've always said he's bust proof because he can give you nothing offensively and lead your team to the number one defense in the league because there's he's erasing shots at the basket. Like he's not like you're not gonna be able to go to the basket on him. So and if you pair him with an actual like center who can bang down there, he could be like a help like a weak side rim protector, it's gonna be elite. The, the rim protection is going to be elite. So, like we said, the defense stuck out, but we knew that was going to happen. And his offensive game is just a little bit more raw than a lot of people thought it was going to be this early. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Bust proof. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. But uh, Listen, man. I'm out of trade market. I ain't, I ain't here for either. I'm out of trade market. <laughs> I like that. But but I agree, right, that we talked about it. Because at worst, who, who was it? It might have been uh, Chris Broussard or one of those guys on Fox Sports. Saying it's like his his floor is like AD yeah. as a defender, and it's like if that's your floor. Like that's worst case scenario. You're you arguably are, the best and, defender in the league, <laughs> right? You you can't be a bust. There's just no way, right? Um, and that was still on display in this game, despite the struggles on the offensive end. Um, five blocks in this game. Um, additionally, you saw him able to switch out onto smaller guys. There's a lot of times in the game where he was guarding Brandon Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he, he blocked a Brandon Miller three point attempt, which he done. He actually did a ton in France. If you watch a lot of his film, um, he blocked a ton, a ton of three pointers. That's just gonna, it's gonna translate. That's gonna happen in the league a lot. That's gonna happen a lot. Yeah. Right. It's just you think you have the space to get a shot over a guy, and it's like never mind. Here's a seven five mm-hmm. freak leaping at me from out the paint. Um, so. That'll happen a ton. The The defense is going to be legit from day one. It was evident in this game. Five blocks in 27 minutes is nothing to scoff at. That is a mm-hmm. lot. And imagine if he played, you know, looking at like per 36 stats, you'd be looking at like seven, eight blocks almost. Right. Um, and so, look, like you said, I agree. The, the balance was tough. Um, it definitely seemed like, Anytime he was driving or getting the ball in, in the post, the Hornets were sending extra bodies at him, um, which made it difficult for him to get to really anything in his bag. They were trying to, to dribble through. There's a lot of times where um, the handle got a little sloppy with the added pressure. Um, he wasn't really able to make a lot of great post moves. Again, I think some of that does come with just the strength aspect, which doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get a ton bigger, but he does have to have a higher base level of strength not mm-hmm. to be able to not be kind of thrown around on the block a little bit or just – as easily displaced um, from what he's looking to do. So, you know, that'll just come with time. You do have to be patient. Uh, but, look, baseline minimum, like you said, the handles and space for a guy his size is, like, 
he's putting it between his legs. He's bringing the ball up the court. Like he's doing a lot of things for a guy that size we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and then additionally, the passing looked good, um, which is exactly what you're going to need in a you know San Antonio Spur offense, making that extra pass, turning good shots to great shots. So, um, you know, it was a very unselfish player. Um, you know, with his time with the Mets '92 in France. So. Um, see that very early on as well. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna take too too much stock in the you know the offensive performance. Like I said, I think the confidence and the the fluidity of the jumper and his um, ability to kind of play on the perimeter on the offensive side of the ball, like all of that, still look good. The shot will fall at some point. I would not be surprised if he has a you know if he plays one or two more games here at the summer league and they shut him down. And maybe he has one game where he you know has a 25 plus point game. Hopefully that quiets all the the ridiculous takes about him being a bust already. Because again, it's summer <clears> league; <throat> like you do not need to put this much stock into those games. Um, and he's like, bro, he has all the pressure in the world. Like, like Doris Burke said his name at least fifty times. Oh yeah, he had to between even before he was playing, like you said, and in the game, bro, at least fifty times they said his <laughs> name. In the fourth quarter of the Blazers Rockets game, it felt like they said Wemby more than they said Amen Thompson or School Henderson. School Henderson. Anybody. Jabari Smith is cooking. He has like thirty <laughs> right now. And it's like Wemby, look how tall he is. Every time every time every time it's a dead boy, they got the camera <clears throat> like this. Look right. at that. <laughs> look how tall he is compared to everyone else. Oh my god, the anticipated debut. Everyone's here for one. Like I get it. Calm down. And I, I do feel like a lot of people are putting way too much pressure on this kid. But um I mean it's when you're that good of a prospect, it happens, and I all the time I just think, I just think it's not fair to put that much pressure on a 19 year old kid. Like I wasn't born, obviously. Well, I was born, but uh, I like I wasn't like conscious enough to like really see what was going on when LeBron was getting um all that hype and stuff. But mm. like back then, I felt like it was way too much pressure. Like that's way too much pressure to put yeah, on somebody. Yeah. Like that's insane. So to come out here and have a bad game, like. Bro, he has all the pressure in the world on him, bro. Like, he's still, you still seen, like, that he has the tools to do a lot of things offensively elite. Like, yes, the jump shot wasn't falling, but the jump shot looks good. Yes, he lost the ball with his handle, but the handle looks good. I understand yeah. he's, like, got pushed around a little bit in the post, but, like, that's something you can, you can get stronger and you can work on those things. Like, he has all the tools. You just have to refine that offensive game a little bit. And like we said, at worst case scenario, the defense will always be elite. Right. And so for the people who are coming out with these crazy takes, you know, saying he's a bust, saying it's not going to work, saying there were people that were like seeing the passing and was like, this ain't nothing we never seen before. This is like, bro, I'm, I'm swear some of y'all really do not like watching basketball. Like y'all just live for hot takes. Y'all live for arguments and debates. Like y'all just never, I don't never just sit down and like enjoy something. Just because chill. Everything watch is viewed from like everything is viewed from like this, the debate shows, the legacy talk, all that type of stuff. That's the same thing. I know we're getting a little bit off track, but that's the same thing. You know how um Carmelo Anthony Sutton was talking about Paul George is like the greatest player ever. Yeah. And like when you hear that, it sounds like ridiculous. But like so I forgot who said it, but somebody was like really like, bro, when you're a kid and you're just watching basketball, you just like if you like somebody, you like their game. You're just watching basketball. You're not thinking of like he didn't right. win this, he didn't do that, he lost to this guy and this, and like he's this and this in the finals. Like you just, you're just watching basketball. Like right, and that's what I feel like a lot of people don't do. A lot of people just don't sit back and like watch the game. They just look at it from a how does this affect this? How does this affect that? Everything is so legacy this, legacy that, bro. We don't need to get into. This is his first summer. Can he even can he get to the league? Like can he play an actual <laughs> game? First? He's not even in the league. Yet. He didn't even play a real NBA game, bro. I, Come on, man. We need to retire the like LeBron level expectations forever. Like, how do we go through a whole career and it's like, cool, this guy was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a junior and was dubbed the chosen one before he even got drafted. That was insane. It's like, all right, crazy. It's like, cool, he lives up to that expectation. We should have never set that expectation. I'm saying we, but, like, the mm -hmm. media should have never set that expectation in the first place. Exactly. So why are we doing this again? And I know that's never going to change because they're always going to do it, but, y'all, like, it doesn't benefit anybody. Like, 
no one gets benefited from having these crazy lofty expectations because it's almost impossible to hit them and it just gives leverage for people to like nick you on your legacy bro she's like why are we even why are we even trying to set him up for legacy anything this is summer league like bro this is just, we shouldn't even be thinking about this thinking like like the people saying that like like when chris was are saying that like if he's anthony davis he's a bust like that is such an unrealistic like standard bro that's crazy that's so it's like if he's not top five all the time he's a bust Oh, is that what you're telling me? If he's not top 10 all right. time, you know how hard it is to do. Like, that's not, it's not easy to do. Like, that's not a fair expectation to have for somebody. Especially somebody that's 19. Bro, he's a kid. I, bro, that doesn't make sense, bro. I don't get it. Yeah. It just it doesn't make sense. does not make sense at all. And I think, I know we talked about it before. Like, bust as a term gets way too overused in the media space. Because, like, if... If that to you, if he's a bust for not becoming a top 10 player all the time, like, what does that really say about any number one overall pick? Like, if they don't become a, a franchise superstar, right. like, are they a bust? Is Wiggins a bust? I don't think Wiggins is a bust. Like, people are probably already saying Zion's a bust just off of injuries. But it's like, A, it's like, bro, the story isn't even done on these guys yet. And it's like, mm -hmm. injuries are out of people's control. It's just, it's so much that factors into all this, like, these are not discussions that need to be had right now. So okay, at the end of the day, yes, the offense looked rough. No, I'm not caring that much about it. It's the first game of summer league. The defense translated like expected. So at absolute worst, even if his offense never grows to you know the level that people think that it can, or if it never you know reaches the heights that um, it was projected to, he's going to be an elite, elite, elite rim protector. And that mm -hmm. can get you three DPOYs, multiple all-star teams, multiple all-NBAs from another French big man who, to mm -hmm. many, is not that good. Hey, man. Um, but love him or hate him, it's only so many people with three or more defensive player of the years. And Rudy Gobert has to be in that conversation. So at minimum, um, you will be one of the best players in the league. You will get... A hundred plus, two hundred plus million dollar mil. contracts, and that is that. So, look, I'm I'm not pressed about Wimby or his summer league debut. 